We, we, we talking about all things sports. We, we, we talking about all things sports. We, we, we talking about all things sports. What's up, everybody? You are talking sports with Mike and PL. I am your co-host, Mr. PL Coulter. Flank to my right is my right-hand man, Mr. Michigan Mike. Michael Hasso. How's it going? What's going on, Mike? We're ready to talk some sports, man? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Hey, well, what's, what's wrong, man? I'm a little, I'm still, you know, we just lost, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we will get to that and much more. All right, so since the last time we talked to the peeps, a lot has happened. Uh, the Kentucky Derby, the 140th one, as a matter of fact, went down yesterday. Congratulations to California Chrome on your victory. Uh, looking to be the first uh, Triple Crown winner since 1976. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Floyd Mayweather? Yeah. They, he had a fight. I, I wouldn't say it too much of a fight. No one really cares until he fights Pacquiao, so let's get that going. <laughs> no one really cares, but he is 46-0, and 0, and uh, he remains pound for pound the best fighter in the world right now. Yes? No? No. Like I said, he has to, he has to fight Pacquiao first. You know, Once he beats him, then he can retire. So is it your position that Pacquiao may be the best in the world until he fights Mayweather? I think he's been dodging him for some reason. I don't know why, but you know, he needs to he needs to finish it out and fight him. All right, right on. Well, I'm sure a lot of people, including myself, agree with you. I would love to see that fight. But uh, let's get this happening in the next fight or two. I don't want y'all to wait till y'all 50 years older yeah. to get on. All right. <laughs> now, um, the NBA, Michigan Mike, first round of the playoffs, fantastic, a- absolutely fantastic. Uh, historic, as a matter of fact. I mean, yeah. you had... The most game sevens. Most game sevens, and actually we were a second away from having another game seven in the, the Houston-Portland series. Um, we had road teams winning. We had high drama. Um, well, what was one of the, the highlights of the uh, first round for you? Um, I'd say, of course, being a Mavs fan, probably game three, Vince Carter, 1.7 seconds left. The three. To win. Yep. Nice, nice. Um, another three probably will highlight my uh, first round would be Damian Lillard's uh, series clinching three against the Houston Rockets. Uh, that should be a pretty good series against the Spurs. Now, we have the Spurs and um, the Portland Trailblazers uh, mm-hmm. in the next round. We have the Los Angeles Clippers and the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City Thunder. We have the Miami Heat and the Brooklyn Nets. And we have the Indiana Pacers and the Washington Wizards. Yep. Anything stick out to you there? I want to see uh, Portland and Spurs. Um, I think that will be a good matchup. Either, you know, they Portland has that good defense, um, way better than the Mavs did. Um, so we'll definitely see that against Tony Parker. Um, also want to see Indiana Pacers against the Wizards. I think that'll be a good one. Yeah, that's one that people may want to keep your eyes on. Uh, the Wizards have flown relatively under the radar. They made quick work of the Chicago Bulls, and we know that Indiana struggled in the first round with Atlanta. So that's one that you really may want to keep an eye on. That could definitely go seven games as well. And these games are set to get started on Monday night. Now, on Thursday night, the NFL takes center stage once again. It's the first round of the annual draft, Michigan Mike. Mm-hmm. Exciting times. Everybody's looking forward to see um, who's going to be added to their favorite team. Now, uh, today we'll discuss um, a couple of divisions close to our very own hearts. We're in Dallas, so we're in um, the NFC East homeland. So, uh, Mike, let's go through a couple of uh, NFC East teams and uh, tell me what you think they may need for the first round. And we'll start with your division winning Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, we'll start with Philadelphia. Um, I have them picking up a receiver. I think it'll be a good, you know, because we got rid of one, Deshaun Jackson. Right. We just got Sproles, so now we need a um, – Macklin's kind of hurt, so we'll have to go off a receiver. I'm thinking Kelvin Benjamin, um, Florida State. Okay. 240, 6'5". Either that or they go for a cornerback. Um, I see those two options in the first round. Um, the Giants, I see them picking up on either in a tight end or a defensive lineman. Okay. Because they already have a quarterback. They have some of their major spots filled. They right. Just, they have crews and, you know. Yeah. Companies. So, um, Dallas, I see them picking up a, a D lineman or an outside linebacker. I see another pass rusher because they're last in the league for sacks. And they just lost to Marcus Ware. Right. So, I see them picking up an outside linebacker with speed. So, that's what I see. All what right. about uh, in the AFC land? What do you see? Um, now, of course, uh, being a Tennessean myself, uh, we're big-time Titans fans there, and uh, we represent the AFC South. Uh, as far as uh, needs for those teams, we're going to keep the theme consistent. Uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, quarterback. I mean, they need a lot, but you have to start with franchise quarterback. 
Uh, they struck out with the last pick, uh, Blake Gabbard, and uh, they'll be looking to do that again. Uh, the Houston Texans have the number one pick. I believe that they need a quarterback, uh, but they do have Jadavian Clowney there uh, sitting at number one. How do you pass that up? Um, not sure that they'll be able to do that, but they definitely need a quarterback as well. Uh, now the Tennessee Titans, my beloved Titans, uh, they just uh, picked up the player option for Jake Locker for next season, so it looks like that um, quarterback is out to maybe for the first round at least. Maybe they'll get one in the second or third. Uh, from your lips to Bud Adams' ears. Hey, you never know. Hey, we need all the help we can get up there. <laughs> um, but if not there, then they definitely need to go pass rusher or um, or cornerback. Yeah, like uh, Denard from Michigan State. He did pretty good. I think uh, Titans will be a good fit. Yeah, he really did do a good job for Michigan State, especially to close out the season and in the Rose Bowl. And uh, we do have to replace Alteron Werner, who the Titans totally botched his contract extension. So, uh, yeah, hopefully so. Uh, now, moving on to the Indianapolis Colts, our division winner from last year. Uh, they're pretty much solid around the board. Uh, if there's anything, um, I have worries about them with uh, Reggie Wayne's health returning from an ACL injury so late in the year last year. So they may want to go wide receiver uh, right out the gate. Um, now, sticking with the NFL theme, I know a couple of weeks ago we talked about Alden Smith and the San Francisco 49ers and um, the whole uh, locker room chemistry versus um, ability. Well, it looks like Harbaugh made his decision and decided to pick up um, Alden Smith's player option for 2015. Now, uh, contrary to that, the Tennessee Titans uh, plan to pick up Jake Locker's uh, contract for 2015 as well, and he's had injury questions and concerns there. Um, do you agree with any of both or neither? Uh, I don't agree with the 49ers <clears throat> picking up their, his uh, contract. I think they could have drafted somebody uh, maybe equivalent to his talent. Um, but Locker, I do I do see that he can grow from this, um, especially this contract, knowing that, hey, we do have faith in you, and maybe he'll do better this year. Yeah, well, you know, from a, uh, I guess from a, an ability standpoint, he's shown that he can get it done. I'm just worried about his health. He, he can't stay on the field for full 16 games, and hopefully the Titans will do a contingency plan in the later rounds uh, on that. Now, uh, speaking of the, the, the college kids that will get drafted into the uh, NFL, the uh, NCAA and, and college football specifically has come under a firestorm recently. And um, Hall of Famer Jim Brown chimed in this past weekend, Mike. He was at a, a, a Hall of Fame gala for the uh, NFL, and uh, he came out with some pretty harsh criticism for the NCAA and uh, what he deems as his hypocrisy in regards to paying the athletes. Uh, now, he was speaking specifically about uh, a player who wanted to uh, be compensated for having a career-ending injury that mm -hmm. had uh, professional aspirations, football player. Um, now, a couple of weeks ago, Northwestern's team uh, voted on whether or not they could unionize. Uh, that would be a, a big step towards breaking down everything in the NCAA as we know it. Um, you're a big-time college football fan. You played high school football. You had friends that played uh, at the collegiate level. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, there's a, uh, I could have a whole segment on this, but... Um, <laughs> We can say I, we both had meal plans in college. We never played, you know, collegiate sports or anything like that. But right. we know how the meal plans work. Right. Um, it ends at a certain time. Now, and explain this for the people who may not have had the dorm room experience. So what you have in, is a meal plan, and it's kind of like a restaurant at downstairs or wherever on campus that you go and eat. Um, at, like restaurants, they close at a certain time. Let's say eight o'clock during the weekday. Okay. Maybe nine o'clock on Sun or Saturday. But on Sundays, they usually close around lunchtime, being 1 or 2 p.m. Right, um, and, and I went to school in Tennessee, you went to school in Texas, and it was the exact same way. So this is a nationwide thing, not a regional thing. Yeah, so what happens is what they're saying when they're complaining about, you know, all they have is a meal plan, and some people that didn't go through that are thinking, well, I mean, y'all have food, blah, 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 but, but not having any type of income, like a job, they don't have time for a job. Um, no they way. actually tell them you you can't work. Right. So right. Right. and then when you on Sunday or you know these kids work out all day, their metabolism is extra high. If you know anyone that does any type of even high school sports, I mean those kids <laughs> we like to eat. Right. right. Um, so especially on a Sunday for dinner, what are they gonna do? I mean everyone says well that's only like fifteen dollars a week, let's say. But I mean it adds up, and it's not just that. It's the little things. That's why they're saying it's the little things. Um, and to put it in retrospect, say if I was an engineer and I got a scholarship, a full ride scholarship, and let's say to Texas, and um, I go up there and they pay me to go to school. Okay. 
for extra money, hey, I have, you know, I'm working on my computer, I invent this app. I sell this app, I get money. They still get money that way. That's so why can't true. they get money by selling a NCAA game or hey, look, there's my jersey. People are having them sign their jerseys when they don't even have enough money to buy their own jersey. Okay, so what do you say to the student that may or may not have had a college experience, especially a dorm or campus experience? Well, hey, they're getting a free education. Well, what do you say to those people? Yeah, but so are these other kids, and they can get a job as well. Like, these kids cannot get a job. This is their job, like literally. They have a schedule of, hey, you go to classes from 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock p.m., and then you have after work session, either you know watching film doing this doing this and then you have to study on top of that there is no room for a job like ncaa major sports that is their job and uh, almost literally because they generate a huge revenue for those schools yeah huge revenue billions of dollars all right so uh, is there a quick fix for this so where's this headed do you think i think this is headed to that they are going to get um, they are going to get paid. It's going to be a fixed amount. It's probably going to be something small, um, going off of a the size of the school, the Division One school. Of course, can't get paid the same as a Division Two school. Um, and then, of course, going by sports of what sport you're doing it for. Um, and of course, it's going to go off by their scholarship because if you're starting, you're not going to get the same as as someone that was on the bench. So I think it's going to start that way. Start small, um, at least to get extra income for their food and what they need, you know, as far as uh, utilities and whatnot. And you do say that this is a good thing. Yeah, I think this is a good thing. I think this needs to be done. Um, I mean, because they're getting billions and billions of dollars off these kids and they don't see one one piece of it. I mean, even if they were supposed to get like they had this, they have this whole movie and video about this. Y'all might want to check it out. Um, we will post that movie on our link. And it's right pretty much about, it talks about this kid that um, gets hurt in a football game. And since he's, quote, a student athlete, they didn't pay his, his uh, doctor bills. Wow. Because he's a student first and an athlete second. Wow. wow. So it's, it's a major thing, yeah. yeah. You might want to go check that out. Yeah, definitely. I will definitely check that out. And we will post that uh, link for you all to check that out as well. Uh, now, speaking of posting to the link, um, it is time for our Ask Michigan Mike segment. Uh, and today's question comes from Kevin in Detroit. What up, Kevin in Detroit? So, hey, man, we we reaching Big Ten country. Yeah, go blue. blue. Go blue. All right, uh, speaking of go blue, he actually has a Michigan question for you. Yo, Michigan Mike, I'm sure you've heard by now about Mitch McGarry. Uh, now, that makes our top seven players from our national title game team two years ago off the roster. Yo, Mike, what do we have left, and what do we need to do here? Okay, so we have, <clears throat> I was going to say, we need a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do really? have some We do have some, um, some light at the end of this tunnel. All right, um, you too. We have, of course, Levert coming back. All right. Walton's coming back, and Irvin's coming back. So those three, and then we have this guy named Doyle. He's kind of like a McGarry, but... <laughs> Uh, we've saw him on video. I showed I showed uh, Paul this too. Uh, there's some there's some insight there. Yeah, I like I like him. I like what I see from him. Uh, big man with skills, and they do need some big men. We do have some uh, freshman guards. Okay. Uh, Abdur Rockman, he and Dawkins. They're both guards. Uh, they're promising them. I think one of them will fill that um, last spot. But we also have a uh, Coleman and Chapman. Chapman's kind of like Gr three. Um, he's about. Six eight, okay. and he likes to shoot the three. All right, and he has good handles with the ball. Okay, so I mean, I might say he might be better than Gr three, honestly, because um, he also likes to drive the lane as well, and we need that. So <laughs> right, and we know you wasn't really quite sold on the total packages known as Gr three, right? Yeah. So we also have Wilson. I think he'll be more of um, a prospect down the line because he's kind of small right now. Once we get some meat on him, then he'll be really good. Similar to Levert and uh, him gaining weight and Stauskas as well. And, right. And yeah. So I, I do see him. I do see. A, I can pick us going to the Sweet 16 again for next year. All right. So uh, big care from Detroit. Uh, you heard it right here from Michigan Mike. Do not worry about your Wolverines next year. The young team will get it done once again. And plus. Yep. Uh, Coach Beeline, uh, he loves to get those young guys in who can Definitely. shoot. Definitely, that's and, what, uh, yeah. 
And they did a really good job of replacing two NBA caliber players last year. Definitely. So thank you, uh, Kevin, for hitting us up on Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to ask Michigan Mike a question about any sport, you can always hit him up on Twitter at Michael Hosso. That's M I C H A E L J A S S O. You can always reach co host at P L Culture. That's at P L C O L T E R. Ladies and gentlemen, life is a sport, so always play to win. Go, Blue.